Welcome to another episode of the Cool Tools Show and Tell. Our special guest this week is Linda Tapp. Linda, would you mind uh, introducing yourself to our listeners and watchers? Sure. My name is Linda Tapp. I am in my day job an occupational safety and health professional. I've been doing that for about 35 years. Uh, in that area, I specialize these times in training, um, really activity-based learning for other safety people. So that's how I spend my days. I like that you say activity-based training. So that conjures up in my mind, you train people by doing things. In some yeah, it's uh, based on something called accelerated learning, which is yeah. kind of the outside idea for a lot of safety and health people. Like they've never learned how to train people. So instead of just lecturing or showing a video, it's all hands-on interactive activities because people learn much better that way and remember much longer. Absolutely, 100%. Yep. Maybe we'll hear more about that. So, okay. Linda, what's um, a tool, a cool tool that you'd like to share with us? Um, the first one I'm actually using now, so I can't hold it up for you. Uh, and it really became great during COVID because everything went online. Everything was virtual and you're trying to do training. And one of the big things with training is eye contact as well. And so many people, as you probably know, are looking at the little camera on the top of their screen and you see like chins and you see people looking down. So the first tool I had was called the center cam, which okay. um, spring of 2020, it was on Indiegogo and I funded it. And I guess in August, I got my first center cam camera. And uh, if I take it off, you'll lose the camera that, that's on me right now. But it's it's about the size of a reinforcement, those little white stickers. Like, it's very small. That's the size of the camera. And it's on a piece of cable that I clip on the top of my screen. And it just comes down right in the middle of the screen. So instead of me having to look at the top bar of my iMac, right. I can just look right at faces. I can look at slides. And it really helps with eye contact, I think. Sure. Uh, but I, I love it. It's been two years of using it. And it's been a great... Right. addition to my my virtual life now and um it, i'm assuming it's a usb plug at the other end yeah, usb plug plug and play right, easy. Right. Just, just reads it um right. no problems at all so i don't know how my eye contact is right now yeah but i have a homemade center cam that i've been using oh, for, for five years yeah it's um i, I, took I think a little web, different. Yeah, it took a is little it tiny cam. no it's actually not that uh, big but i uh, i put it on a aluminum bracket and i hang it and put it right in front of the screen and yeah. I've been doing that for years now, but I like the idea of having something even smaller. So yeah, it just clips on. Yeah, I'll tell. Um, even before that, I did try to do some fancy things with putting my, you know, camera with tape and duct tape and, and balancing things to get the camera in the middle of the, yeah, the yeah. screen. And those problem with that is that it would block too much of the slides. Yeah. It was too big. So this is really tiny, which which I do like. It has autofocus as well. Uh, I think the company is trying to expand and now they sell uh, ring lights that will attach to it. So you're just taking that up more screen sense. space. You know, I, I have to keep the screen space tiny so I can see see what I'm talking about right. as well. But it's, um, yeah, it's, so, it's a good product. Now they have their regular website. Um, it's not just through Indiegogo because I think they're off and running. Uh, I did, the other day, saw a competitor pop up, um, all other company doing the same thing. So there's probably more than just them now that are that are invented at this stuff. Right. Okay, but but the the original is called the original, Center, yes. Center Cam. Center Cam, yeah. Yeah, that's really yeah. great. I will have to try that out because, um, um, I'm you know as I said, I've been using for years this thing. It works great, but smaller would be better. Um, yeah, that's, that's the idea. Yeah. And also, actually, to tell you the truth, mine is so old; it's probably ten years old now. Um, I could use better resolution. So what's, is it a pretty good resolution on this one? Um, yeah, I actually wrote that down to see it's um, 65 degree camera lens because you're a photographer, I think, right? So you would understand all these these specs on this, this sheet. Um, 1080 resolution. I don't know if that's considered good or, or not good. Uh, 30 frames per second. Right. Um, 1080 is pretty good. So this is, this, those are great qualifications. Thank you for that. That's a fabulous uh, suggestion. Good. So good, what's good. what's a what's a second cool tool? The that second cool tool. Um, I don't know if I need to go in a certain order, but I'll show you this one. This is um, this is a dual dog leash, uh -huh. right? which you see. It's this part is about six inches, and then the rest of it is about five feet. Okay. So you can walk two dogs at once very easily, which is which is something I do every day. Um, 
and this ties to the third tool I'll tell you about in a second, but I have two very active dogs who have to walk at least an hour a day. So I work from home. So if I'm not in front of the computer, I'm out with them. And to have hands able to do anything, I can't have two different leashes. I I see people tangled up all the time. And and this double leash is the best thing. I actually have a a third version that I use when I walk a neighbor's dog too, because it's just one handle. It's you cushioned. Have, you have pull. three three on one leash. I have three on one, one handle. Yep, and it it's wow. just oh wow. Yeah, so it's um it's really convenient. It hasn't broken. It's um it's been really good. And do do you, is there any training involved in getting the dogs used to having a single leash? No, not at all. Our our two have been together for more than ten years now. They're older, so they're fine together. Even when we add the third, they seem to be fine. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's not too long that I can't hold them close if I need to. Like it's only five feet, so right. they're not out ten feet in front of me. So that's that's my second thing that I I really rely on every day. And are there um, multiple manufacturers or multiple brands uh, with these? And th- is the one that you have particularly better than the others? Uh, I, there are multiple ones. I have tried some others. This one I think is no longer available on Amazon, which is where I got it. Yeah. But I did some searching. I think Walmart has a version now. And there's some other places. So if you just search dual leash, you know, you'll find a bunch of options that that pop up everywhere and, and from I think fifteen to forty dollars. It depends right. on the and they're the all, site. all kind of very similar in quality. You mean all very similar? Um, some of them don't have the five feet, you know, piece before it splits. They might go right from the handle. I like having that little piece before. Okay. The leashes split out separately. So that, that's the kind that's really worked. And they don't tangle because of the, let me see if I can show you again. Those are the way it's connected. There's you a see, swivel. There. There's a swivel. It doesn't tangle. Yeah. So it's really good. They can go all over and I'm not tangled up. They're not tangled up. Right. Right. So, okay. So that's that's so, really yeah. great. Um, the third one connected to that. You're, you're, on a, you're on a roll now. They're really great stuff. So. I am on a roll um, because they're all somewhat related to working from home now with you know, sitting in front of my camera, I get out with them and I, I walk yeah. a lot. Um, when I walk with them, I'm generally getting a thousand ideas at once. And you might know how that goes where things are in your head. And very often I'm trying to pull out my phone and walk the dogs. And my old method was to send myself an email for everything, every idea that I would get. It, it could be anything from a food shopping trip to someone I had a call to a new idea for some safety activity. So now I have my, pull them out here. Um, I have, oh, this is the second version. I have my Echo Frames, which are these, which I really don't like how they look because I I just don't like the appearance of how they look on my face. But they are, um, these are Bluetooth, not Bluetooth, blue light lenses. So there's no prescription, but you can take them to a doctor and get prescription put in. When you say blue light, tell me what you mean by that. Like um, a lot of people like to wear them when they're on the computer because they, they think it helps their eyes. You know, it's like a, I don't, know how, I don't know how to describe it. It's supposed to take some of the brightness off of the screen so you don't get headaches when you're on the computer all day. So it's uh, reducing the blue light rather than adding. Reducing. Okay. Yeah. I know the recent I mean, phone notification. funny she's talking to me. Yeah. Um, the Echo. Uh, it hasn't been proven as far as I can tell, the whole, you know, wearing lenses. Uh-huh. So I would rather have no lenses in it at all than just have than have these. But they do sell a sunglass version now, which is what will probably be my next purchase also i'm i'm you lost me when you said you'd rather ha- have no lenses than no lenses because i don't think no that, lenses. i would i would rather i sound this crazy i would rather have just the frames that do what they're supposed to do and not have any 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 glass in it because for me they're not serving any purpose they're not prescription but you, you know, said I don't that they're filtering they're, out the the blue that's what they're supposed to be doing but, but so that's and, debatable and that's why you're wearing them no, I wear them because they do everything my Echo does, my Alexa. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's why I wear them. That's I, why I wear them. Yeah, I, for all I, the hands-free I, I stuff. That. So, okay. yeah, that's that's how they tie to the dog walking <laughs> because I don't have to pull out the phone and take the notes. So I simply wear these and I just say, I call it Echo. You can rename your Alexa, so, say Echo, okay. add to uh, my to-do list, and it goes instantly. So I don't know uh, anything about this. So, yeah. so, so the, the frames... Mm-hmm. Um, have microphones in them, yeah, and they are listening like Alexa or Echo. Like Alexa, and um, are they and they're tied to your phone? They're tied to my phone, so it even does. There's something you can filter called the VIP filter. So if I get a text or message from my husband or children, it says you have a message. All I do is swipe, and I reply verbally as well, and it goes back, um, which is great because I don't have to pull out the phone and try with my thumb just to to answer. Okay. Uh, 
all kinds of notifications you can set up to hear. Right. Um, and that, no one else can hear around you because it's right, right behind your ear right. as well. Um, but it also does phone calls. I listen to my audio books on it. It also does music. Right. It so, does so why not a lot. AirPods? Because um, walking especially, I need to hear around. And AirPods for me block out too much. Really? Traffic. Um, people, joggers coming up behind us, like I, I hear so much better with this. And for me, the sound is, is good. So I like having open ear, being able to hear traffic and everything else. I see. Walking. But it's, it's really saved me. You know, I get every idea down and I just say, echo, add to my to-do list. I come back, open the app and the things are there. Um, everything that I meant to do. So every night I make sure I check what I've downloaded throughout the day. So for me, these have been great as well. Um, I can show you a side thing if you want to see this, how this started, because yes. it started with the um, the Ray-Ban glasses, which I also have, which are cooler looking. <laughs> Either there was keep business glasses, you know, I, that uh, Bob Cruz worked on. about these. So, so these are Ray-Ban. Um, these are associated with Facebook uh, and they do photos. So that's that's the biggest difference. Um, I see. I have to take a photo or just click a button and it takes a photo. And it ends but, up but they don't have the the Alexa or the Echo. these don't have Alexa, but they will do um, music. They'll do audio books. They'll do things like that. Um, I like the Alexa ones much better. That's why I think I need to do some less version of the Alexa ones. But as far as photos, like I'm not really running around taking a lot of, you know, anonymous sure. photos. But right. I did hiking in September in the Canadian Rockies, and there was a lot of narrow paths, and all I had to do was say take a photo, and I was getting photos. Like through, without having to pull out the camera or my iPhone and worry about dropping it. So I got some really good photos hands-free doing that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So both of them are really hands-free, you know, blessings, I guess. Right, I don't right, right. Well, they're kind of like <laughs> prototypes of what is, you know, the smart glasses that are coming. Um, That's what, yeah, I, the ones they're trying. I was trying to see if Apple's were ready yet. No. I do like Apple products and it's two years away, I think, right? Sure. For Apple. Yeah. Yeah, but that these are kind of prototype versions of it. So the first one you talked about, the one that does Echo, um, what mm -hmm. are those glasses called? They are called, I think, just Echo glasses. Amazon's Echo glasses. Oh, so Amazon sells them. Amazon sells them. So they actually have a tab oh. up top on their page that's all their Alexa Echo products. Okay. Uh, and it's variations of glasses now. Now they're really kind oh. of spread out. Wow, it's really funny. That completely went over my head. I did no idea. <laughs> All right, it's all tied to the dog walk because <laughs> it's oh, so yeah, much. No. Uh, so, so Echo Glasses, um, which you can talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the Ray-Ban glasses, which you can photograph see-through, basically. See-through, yeah. Right. And so what we want is a combination of those and combo. <laughs> everything else. Which I think that Echo will, the sunglass version, but won't do the photos. And I said photos are only important for me when I'm like right, hiking, right. I have no hands, I have hiking poles in right. my hands. And and, and you, you believe that the Echo version are available in prescription sunglasses yeah. as, as well? Yeah, I think they both can be. I think the Ray-Bans are associated with um, one of the big eyeglass stores. If you take them in, they'll change the lenses out. Okay, you, you have to take them in and take them in. Okay, yeah, I see. and they'll, they'll do it. Uh-huh. Interesting. So these are mostly the frames that you would be buying. Um, yeah. All right, I see. Okay, huh? That's really interesting. So yeah, so a lot of that can be done by the AirPods, but but you were finding that it, AirPods are too airtight, AirPods, yeah, too sound much, tight, yeah, whatever. too much for me. And I know if you go to that Amazon Alexa Echo page, they do have pods coming out. I think they're very similar. They they don't seem to be very expensive. But I think they'll do the same the same thing right, as right, far right. as listening, send a message and reply. Even I'll get like a LinkedIn notification. Do you want to reply? Like you can set it up to hear from you know, anything. Sure, sure. Um, well, that's that's fabulous. Okay. So, Linda, I just love these. What's your fourth one? My fourth one is not really <laughs> at all. Um, and this is a tiny little little fan that I'll show you. Um, it, it's about the size. What's that? Maybe five inches, six inches. Yeah, that's sort of like what we think of as a computer inside a yeah, TV fan. Yeah, little tiny fan, USB plug, um, which I've been traveling with my last six trips uh, uh -huh. for a lot of reasons, not just for air circulation because many hotel rooms have, have no fan. I like to sleep with a fan. Right. And also it's a good white noise background. Uh -huh. So and it's really lightweight. I mean, it's it's like nothing. It's weighs as much as the glasses I just showed you. So uh -huh. in this case, it's easy. Um, plug it in and I actually sleep much better in the hotel having rooms. The, when I have the air moving. Air moving. And it's not the noise, I think, especially. It's uh -huh. just that background. 
right? Where, when you are using it at night to sleep, how do you set it up? Where do you point it to? How far away? <laughs> Tell everyone I just have it on the nightstand and uh-huh. point it towards me. You know, there's okay. three settings as well. It's low, medium, high. You can really blast it if you want. Um, but it's um, just been my latest travel gadget that I, oh. I come around with. Okay. Um, and what's that called again? The name of it? This is just, I think, a portable desk fan. I think they're selling you the desk fan. It's okay. a portable, lightweight little, little thing. I, yeah, I don't know if we have the official name on this list, but it's just a portable desk fan. And how long would it run on like a charge? Um, this, I haven't even charged. This is plugged in. It's, to, oh, it's, it's plugged in. It's not plug a... And plugs in. Okay. I used to have a, a battery version that took four double Ds or four D batteries. Right, right. And I think we'd a ton and it wouldn't last one night. So right, right. I didn't want to carry that around anymore, but this one plugs in. So it's okay. easy. Okay. So plugged in. Um, is it plugged into like a, a AC power or is it plugged into a USB? It's like a USB. Like it has, like comes with a USB. Okay. Your oops. Right. Board and yeah, I just add it to the plug. Okay. So yeah, you could plug into a USB. You know, some hotels have those at the yeah. on nice stands, not the actual hotel. Yeah. Well, this is this is really great. Thank you for taking time. We really appreciate. There's fantastic suggestions, okay. things I hadn't known. How glad it's always, it's always, all, uh, getting those ideas down on paper. Yeah. You know, so, um, so you can't t- write down. Tell us a little bit about something that um, you're enthusiastic and excited by these days. Um, a couple things. Uh, for safety wise, um, I've written a bunch of books for safety training, which is all good. Now I'm working on one for total worker health. It's called where I'm the editor. So that's a new experience. Um, but the thing totally not related to safety that I'm really excited about is this project I have called Dabble now. Dabble. And it started, it started when I was 50. It was called 50 things where I went to do 50 brand new things. Like I could never have done them before ever. So I went on this mission and, and not bucket list things because they're too big. These are, it could be anything small. It could have been, I learned life skills was one thing. I, things I just wanted to learn new. So I did that for that year and I just haven't stopped for years. And, and a lot of people started to say, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do a class on that. Can I go with you? How do you find these things? So I do this weekly newsletter now where I basically share the things that I've discovered and tried. And they're not always successful. Some of them are not successful at all, but at least I try. So in my mind now, dabble is give it a try. If, it, if I like it, mm-hmm. I can go deeper, try some more. If I don't, mm-hmm. move on and and do something else. So um, that I'm really excited about. I hope to put them all together one day in a, in a book and, and kind of tell people how to find the activities, which ones are low cost, which ones are difficult. Um, but that that just keeps things really interesting. I can't do safety all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I have to keep trying, keep trying this stuff. No, no, it's a fabulous idea. I love that. I love the term dabble. Is this perfect? So when you're dabbling, uh, mm-hmm. do you find yourself having to make the choice between learning something new and continuing something that you have done, maybe get a little better. How how do you negotiate that? It's really if I, if I enjoy it, honestly, you know, I'll take a, a class, even an eight hour class sometimes, which, I, which is a long dabble. Some of them can right. be very quick. And if I really like it, then I must, in, I might invest in the equipment or more classes um, right. or just go deeper along those lines. But a lot of times I'm glad I tried it and I understand it. Sure. Uh, you know, for example, when I just did was um, a pottery wheel, which isn't that uncommon, but I'd never sat behind the pottery wheel. Right. And doing some of these things, it gives you an appreciation for how hard that is, you right. know, right. so you know, you'll go to craft shows and people think, why does that cost so much? But when you really start to learn, you know, how stuff is made, yeah. you really start to right, appreciate right. all that work yeah. that's in there. But my question was sort of when you have when you have an hour free time, uh-huh. how do you decide whether to spend it on learning something new or uh-huh. taking something you already know how to do and continuing that, becoming more expert yeah. in that? It's probably availability, honestly. It's what? Because I have, to, I have to schedule these new things pretty far in advance. I either right. sign up for a class or one thing with COVID, a lot of classes became available online. Um, right. I took a lock picking class online, which was four weeks. So that was a big dabble too. But I have to really schedule those so I know if they're coming out. Um, right. I just also did a tufting class, you know, when you do the rug with the punch. Uh-huh. Uh, that had to be scheduled months in advance. So if right. I don't have something laying around to do, I usually do go back to something else that I have. I can dig up and, and work on something else that I've done for a long time. Yeah. Are there the kinds of things where you were dabbling before, but now you've done it so long that you could say you have some expertise in? Um, maybe. And that's, that's, 
you know, life. It's actually pickleball, you know, which is like the biggest growing sport in America right now. Um, I wanted to try it. I found someone to give me a lesson and that I do a couple times a week now. Okay. So that one stuck and that one I kept kept okay. going back and, you know, get much, much deeper into it. Probably probably surprised myself as well how much I actually liked that right. one and, and kept trying. So in the general categories of dabbling, you there are yeah. probably infinite number of crafts, right? You know, yep. tufting, there's crochet, yeah. quilting, all the kind of stuff. And then there's sports. Mm -hmm. You mentioned pickleball. I'm sure you could learn golf if you wanted to. I, I tried that one, didn't last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that um, wasn't a good one. So besides sports and crafts, is there other categories of things that you may uh, invest into? As yeah, a food's been a big, big one as well. Uh -huh. um, trying food or trying to make something, you know, like learning different cuisines, things. like learning to cook Chinese or things yeah, like, like that. One was to have an um, insect meal. So I had cricket okay. tacos and I'll, you know, I'll try a lot of insects. I'll eat anything. So it's fine. I'll eat, it would go along those lines. Um, the knife skills was another one that's more really practical because I do use those all the time now. So some things I think have really helped me, you know, in the long term that have I wouldn't have taken, thought about. Uh, not, not tying class yet. Not, not tie. I have um, little flashcards on that and, not seeing it is very difficult. <laughs> See, uh, maybe I heard about on one of your shows that um, oh, there's a, an application, right? That that someone you can oh, actually yeah, yeah. There's the an knot. application for knots. That are yeah, I think knots. I, I, I have that one to learn. That's a good one to add. Um, I have magnet fishing in my pile to try. Have you yeah. done a magnet fishing? So I have to try that still. So I have a, a big list of. There's another one. Um, I've done kitsugi, which is the Japanese. You know where you re glue things. That, Broke to make them look beautiful. Right. That was easy. And there's a new Japanese one, which I can't forget the name, but it's you're making a print with a fish, yeah. which is another kind of unusual one, but that's on my coming up as right. well. So. Yeah, no, there's lots of things. At the Mon Monterey Bay Aquarium, they often make um, prints from huge, giant squids that are just incredible. Wow. Like, that is right. they're, they're bigger than you are. So uh, making a print is really a big thing. Uh, and there's a, actually for a long time, uh, Oakland, the bookmakers had a, um, they did a, what do they call it? Steamroller press. So okay. you do wood cuts or linoleums at a big scale and they would rent a steamroller and everybody, once a year, everybody would bring their wooden plywood sheets and the steamroller would come over and they'd have a press big enough to make a, a wood print with a steamroller. And I thought wow. that was utterly genius. Yeah, that is very awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's finding stuff. It's like, I love ideas from people. You know, I always ask in the newsletter, send me something if there's something I'm not thinking of or missing. And I live not far from New York City, which is a big plus because there's so much offered, you know, so many classes on whatever I could possibly want to take that I could just go in and do that. And that online really helps as well. And, um, and is you, you also really stress classes. Is, is that, uh -huh. um, why would you prefer a class versus, say, just, watching a YouTube or, or going, just starting yourself, see how far you get. Um, have you learned something about taking classes over the years? Uh, I, I do like the social aspect of the classes, especially during COVID. I was really looking forward to be back with real people. Again, I have done some things myself. I did um, uh, Uber, I think it's called. It's Turkish printing where you're making, it's like a marbling technique. And it's some really you interesting. Mean the, the, mean the floating on the inks on the on yeah, the water. it flows. Yeah. And I think it's is it some kind of bile? Like it's mixed in with that water to make it float. Like I had right. to get some special ingredients from Etsy. Like I'll order ingredients from Etsy or right, supplies. Right, right. And that one I did myself just watching videos. So depends if I can find a class. If I get an idea, like the knot one. I don't think I'll find a knot class. So I might have to try the knot tying mm -hmm. on my own. Yeah, and I just thought of in terms of nice, you can use these skill knot tying skills the rest of your life. Um, yeah. Well, this is really wonderful. So um, if people did want to follow you, we'll have a link for your newsletter. Yeah. If you make sure you send it to me or Camille or mm -hmm. Claudia. And um, um, that's really great. I wish you great success. It sounds like a fantastic um, way to approach life, dabbling. Plenty of things to do still, right? <laughs> the list is yeah. never ending. <laughs> It is. Do you have any, what's your most, do you have a memorable class that you were completely blown away or surprised by what it was that it sort of was either easier or better than you thought it was going to well, be? I, I have a very strange one and that was uh, taxidermy, which, yep. which uh, I thought, you know, I was undergrad degree in biology. 
technology. So I thought I can do this, but that's a little creepy. So that one kind of kind of sticks with me. Um, and I did that with the class. I wasn't going to try that on my own, just find some roadkill and, yeah, 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 yeah. and do something that would be a little a little disturbing. But yeah, so that one kind of sticks out a lot. And in your newsletter or elsewhere, do you share the things that you are producing even in your class? I, I do. I'll share usually along the way pictures. I'll take photos right. as I go through it um, and then share the final product. That's I say right. a couple of things failed. Um, trying to trying to make glasses out of cutting bottles, that failed a lot. You know, it should have been an easy thing, but could not get a glass out yeah, of a bottle. Yeah, yeah. So things like that didn't work, but I do share the failures as well. Sure. Well, this is really wonderful. What a what a delight! Thank you for volunteering. We appreciate yeah, thanks it. Thanks for having me. And um, I'm so glad that um, you're at work in the world dabbling. Yes, thank you. Alrighty, this year, our Cool Tools blog will be 20 years old, which means we've been posting something new every day for 20 years. It's only possible because of the very engaged and knowledgeable readers and listeners like yourself. You've kept this place going, and we are very grateful for you. With this idea of 20 years in mind, um, we decided to try an experiment this year, and I'm inviting our guests and listeners to join me on our Cool Tool Show and Tell, which is the program that you're listening to right now. So if you feel you'd make a good guest on this podcast and have four uncommon tools that you'd like to share with us, um, please sign up on our form on the website and we'll see about inviting you. You must be comfortable talking on a video and um, you need to have some tools that you can show um, we record on, as you know, on Zoom. We do a YouTube version, a visual video version of it, as well as an audible version. Fill out the form if you're interested and um, list your four, four cool tools and we'll see if there's a good fit. The applications aren't guaranteed in any way. Um, and we're looking at tools that are new to us and appropriate tools and um, whether the times will work for you. So um, we're really interested in hearing from people all over the world, not just in the U.S., although the tools have to be available online, easily available online. And um, if you are a longtime listener, you kind of know what the definition of our tools are. They're very broad. They can be anything that's handy, from something in the kitchen to something used to travel to a workshop to something professional that we may not know about. We're really interested in things that we don't know anything about. So um, this is an open invitation. We'll give it a try. If you think you make a good guess for this podcast, um, fill out the form. There'll be a link somewhere on our website. Um, and we look forward to, to chatting with you. Thank you.